Yo, I got a shout out though to Dion, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know, Dosa Dion, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at that Minnesota Vikings game. Okay, we're going to be looking back at our Vikings game from Sunday because now the film is out. And I went back and watched it once again. And I saved a pretty good amount of clips from it. I probably won't show you guys all of them. We'll see. I'll probably cut, cut here and there. I don't want to show you guys everything, but I do want to show you some of the main points that I took away from this what was it? 14 point loss. I keep thinking we lost by 20. We lost by 14 points to the Minnesota Vikings. And again, this was one of those games that were once again decided by just a few plays that really changed the outcome of the game. And a lot of games go like that, but that's how the Lions season has kind of been so far this year. Just a few plays deciding games. And I think we've seen that for the last two weeks now. And that's what you'll see in the Minnesota game. But I want to dive further than that. Instead of just show you, okay, here's the plays that they could have done better on. We could have won. Instead, I want to show you where the Lions are actually improving, where I see improvement, certain players that are sticking out to me, you know, maybe players that are returning from injury, things like that. Good things I see and also still places that both on offense and defense the Lions need to continue to improve uh, to become a better team maybe we're seeing improvements there maybe we're not seeing improvements maybe there's no strides there so we're going to take a look at all of that in today's video uh, I'll try to keep it as short and sweet as possible but you guys know how I get when I start watching the film man I start talking a lot so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video okay so the first play we're going to look at here is a third down play now as you guys can remember the Lions got the ball first we start off with a three and out. And that's that's not how you want to start, right? You start with a three and out, that really hurts. And here's what the Lions are going to do on this play. So you got about a third and two here. The thing with the Detroit Lions offense that I still don't love is some of the route concepts that we have. I just I just don't like them. I mean, I think it's not a coincidence that we don't get a lot of separation when it comes to statistically for our receivers and targets because we don't seem to really scheme many guys that open. I mean, I think we have enough talent to do it. Now, in this game, maybe give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. They were missing Galladay and, and Agnew. That's, that's two pretty big losses, no question, at the wide receiver group. We also didn't have Mohamed Sanu activated. So we only had four receivers in this game. But still, just some of the route concepts to me just don't make any sense because it's just not getting separation. It's not creating players to get open. It's just hoping that your guy wins the one-on-one. -on -one. And on this play, the Lions of 32, we've seen this a lot this season. It's pretty simple. The Lions are literally just going to basically run off. They're trying to run off their cornerbacks and they're trying to just set up a quick little flat here to Danny Amendola and they try to get two yards there. The problem is the cornerbacks are very disciplined uh, for the Minnesota Vikings. And keep in mind, guys, they were missing three cornerbacks in this game, right? Three cornerbacks and we didn't take a lot of shots. Now, Matthew Stafford talked about it after the game saying, that you know they really play do safeties things like that and there were a lot of instances where they would try to force everything underneath there were some opportunities though and we didn't really take many shots just i don't like you here because i don't like that you don't have any other option i mean if it's not there it's not there now another problem with this is danny Madola doesn't run around far enough you need two yards you have to make sure you at least run two yards because knowing Amadola, no hate to Amadola, he's not a very fast player he doesn't make a lot after the catch he needs he needs to at least run two yards. No matter who you are, you have to run two yards on this play because they're going to be pressing up. They're going to be playing tight. So you need to assume that by the time you catch it, you better already be in front of the first down. I don't I don't like catching assuming that you're going to be able to run after you catch it, especially when the quarterback's rolling out. You know, this is a tough throw for Stafford. So you can see here they, they, they just clear out. The cornerback does a great job of getting off. And you can see he's not far enough. I mean, you guys can see where the first down marker is. It's down here. He's not far enough. And uh, where he catches this ball, he catches it behind it. And you know, it's a fourth down. So that's how our first drive goes. We had a good run, and then all of a sudden, that's how our first drive goes. So we punt it, scored really quickly. Here, I want to circle Jamie Collins. The problem is when you play really aggressive, sometimes you over-pursue, right? Sometimes you overextend, I would say, and all of a sudden, you get yourself in a bad position. And knowing you're playing Minnesota, you have to shut down the run game. I'm sure that was the emphasis. Matt Patricia talked about it. They did a good job of mixing it up. Well, here you're going to see Jamie Collins really over-pursuit here. Hit you with the play action here. They're going to hit you with the play action this side. You're going to see Collins dive in. And the problem is Collins gets in too far. And by the time he realizes that the quarterback still has the football, you can see that there's a couple of options they honestly have here. I mean, they have a pretty good amount of options here in his own defense. But you can see Collins is just, he's just so far out of the play, it's going to be a completion. It's just a huge gap in the defense. And all of a sudden, you know, they move to change there. So what I talked about during the game we were watching it is why is Okuda starting over Amani? Because I felt like, okay, you start true fine. Amani's got to be your other starter. That wasn't the case. The Lions started Okuda. Now, I'm not sure if Amani was dealing with injuries or whatnot, but they seemingly knew something I didn't because it seemed like Okuda was the better option in this game. However, on this play, he simply just gets beat man to man. You're going to see that. So they go with the crossing route, but this is the kind of route concept that I think the Lions can learn from. I think the Lions need to learn from things like this because look, Okuda's not in a bad position right here, right? But what you see is that it kind of slows down the defenders. All of a sudden, there's a gap. 
and maybe you can even go to the inside here. The line slide your safety over and help. And all of a sudden you have a, you have a good advantage here on just the crossing routes. Those are the kind of things that the Lions don't do. They don't cross players in coverage. I mean, that's something that I wish we would see from our offense. It's like other teams do a really good job of creating space. We don't seem to do a very good job of creating space uh, for our receivers. Then they go with the quick fish, Delvin Cook. I wanted to show this one because I think this is Everson Griffin's first tackle as a Detroit Lion, I think. You can see Everson Griffin, you know, gets off there, makes the tackle. And uh, yeah, that was good to see. I didn't notice that when we, when we were playing the game. So I thought, okay, I'll show that. All right, so now we're back on offense. They go down, they eventually score. It was a bad drive for us. It's 7 nothing really quickly. And the Lions get the ball back. But here you're going to see, once again, the Lions do a really good job. And there's tons of clips. I didn't show you all of them. But running between the tackles, running behind the guards, it's something that in our game plan we stress when it came to rushing football. Trying to rush to the outside is very difficult against this team. They're fast. But they don't have a lot of size on the inside. I loved Peterson in this matchup, but he played well. Peterson played really well when he had opportunities because of his size. I loved it. I love Peterson's size against the Minnesota Vikings behind the guard, between the tackles. And it worked. It really did. It worked pretty well. Then we talked about screens. If you're going to do it, it's got to be quick. This one was quick. I mean, it, they didn't tell at all. It was very very quick it was as soon as he snapped it he threw it out there to Danny Amendola that was a good play so I felt like the scheme wasn't awful here Again, I would like to see them more up tempo, maybe take some more shots. But, you know, they did do a couple of things that we talked about during the week. We go, we got Swift in the backfield here. And again, trying to get the outside is tough because then you got the linebackers, you know, trying to be blocked by tight ends. But Swift does a really good job on this play of making the cutback. Boom. He sees the cut there, finds the hole, gets upfield, and he gets a big gain, a very big gain. I think it's like a 16 yard run. But you'll see that's inconsistent with Swift. Sometimes he does that, sometimes he just tries to get the outside and he doesn't go anywhere. And in this game, there's a couple of examples where he just tried to get to the outside and all of a sudden he didn't go anywhere. So now the Lions, okay, they're moving the ball. They're down 7 nothing, looking to get some points. And again, this whole route concept to me, I just, I don't like it. There's nothing, no one's getting open on this play. And something that T brought up is you don't see a lot of adjustments before the snap. You just don't see a lot of moving pieces. It's a lot of stuff that's already decided before they get out there. So you send the motion to Amendola. But if you just look, I mean, we're just going to run it out here. We're just going to run a little underneath route. We're going to try to get to Hawkinson over middle. And we're going to run, I think, like a little out route. May have, it wasn't a double move. But you can see there's really not a lot here. I mean, the Lions don't seem to scheme players open. I mean, there's no one open on this play. You try to fire this, there's a very good chance the safety's jumping this and picking it. You may have to dump off here to carry on. Maybe, maybe you do, but you can see Big V's getting beat here, so the pressure's already in Stafford's face. There's nothing open. I mean, we don't scheme players open that well. Like I said, it's not a coincidence that we have the lowest separation. No one's schemed open. And what makes this even worse is that we go out and miss the field goal. So those two plays on our own are the key plays. So we've already seen a couple of plays that have changed this game. We saw the Amendola not running far enough. That's the first one. And then we see that sack, which leads to miss field goal. That's the second one, okay? Those are two big plays. Those are two swing plays. Right, because you're looking at those, maybe we score the first drive. Maybe we don't, I don't know, but maybe we do, right? Take some more time off, whatever. Maybe we score the first drive, get some momentum. Second drive, you miss a field goal and you get sacked. There's just a couple of little things the lines are missing here where the game could be much more competitive and they could come out faster, but they just have a couple of miscues because for the most part, the game plan wasn't bad. It was simply, honestly, and I'm, I'm gonna apologize a little bit, Daryl, but well, I didn't think the game plan was awful. I just don't think that, we capitalized on some of our opportunities here and it killed us. And again, I don't like some of our route concepts. So here is the play action here. And this is something with Okuda that we've talked about, I think last week, but maybe it was two weeks ago. And this is Okuda in zone. That's the one place where he seems to struggle. He's getting better at man. He seems more comfortable there. But when it comes to zone defense, you could tell he didn't do it a lot in college, right? He didn't do it a lot in college. It was a short off season. So he's still learning on the fly. But man, you can just tell that Okuda just has that place to work. And that's one place that concerns me is his zone coverage. I mean, look at how far he's, I mean, he's not even near the receiver. There's no chance he's going to make this play. And he just continues to run deep. Like there's no one there. I, I understand, you know, there's a zone, but I mean, guys, there's, there's literally 10 yards between defenders here. There's 10 yards. There's, you got, someone has to come down and Kersey's stepping down because of the dump off. Okuda has to recognize that and come down and he does it. Okuda gives too much space. Zone coverage has been a killer for, for Jeffrey Okuda so far this year. It's been the one place and then they go up and miss the tackle. That's been the one place where he must improve. Man defense gotten much better, but it's the zone defense where I'm a little bit concerned and he just needs to be, I think, more confident, more aggressive, whatever it may be. This is a play I like. I kind of like this one uh, from the Lions here. This is interesting. I, I mean, I, the, at the time of watching this, I was really confused of what we were doing defensively, but I kind of like it here. So you got the tight end. Irv Smith, and they're going to have Okuda cover him here. So Okuda's got to follow across. They're going again to the crossing routes. But this is interesting. This is good communication, just a little bit too slow for Desmond Trufant. So you have Harmon, and you have you know Desmond Trufant here. The communication is just a little bit too slow because they're going to switch. So boom, Harmon sees that, and now Harmon's going to take this route. He's going to underneath it. He's going to jump underneath. He's going to take that route. Trufant needs to be quicker to step here. If Trufant steps here now, 
All of a sudden, Okuda can get back in play, and that's the only options they have down the field. Now he's going to force it somewhere, but Trufant just takes a little bit too long. He's a little bit slow to get back, and all of a sudden, it's completed. It was good. It was a good thought. It was a good plan. It was just it was just played out just a little bit too slow. And that's probably another one of those plays where you point to where the Lions missed an opportunity. Again, running between the guards, running strong between the guards, it was successful pretty much all game. I mean, it really was. We came in with the game plan saying, hey, look, they got to run good run defense. But if you run between the tackles, you can have success. And we did. We did. And again, Matthew Stafford, this is what I like about what we did here is we gave him a lot of dump down options. I mean, look, he didn't take a lot of shots to the end zone here. Again, they're playing, you know, two safeties. But they gave him the dump down. That's all you need. I mean, that five yards of pass, that's all you need. And uh, I felt like for the first half, we were living on those. And it was fine. He was 16 for 18 the first half. It was working well. So I was completely okay with the dink and dunk. I mean, we talked about it. Dink and dunk was fine. I like to mix in shots, but it was working. You know, they hit him with the slant there. But again, then you have to capitalize. If you're going to take these long drives, and this is when we talked about who Matthew Stafford is as a quarterback. If you're going to ask him to play like this, and, uh, you know, you're not going to draw up many deep shots and again not having Galladay's part of that and how they're going to play defensively but there were opportunities if you're not going to take a lot of deep shots you need to make sure you capitalize on these drives because settling for field goals and missing the field goal things like that those kill you and again here for the Lions they don't capitalize so I like this they go out to Swift out of the out of the flats here it's it, this is a good design play I mean this is a really good design play this is what teams do against us all the time they basically use Marvin Marvin Jones as a screen right Marvin Jones is almost as a screen he's already there to block while the ball's in the air, it's caught. This could, this probably should be a touch. He just, I don't know how he didn't score there, but he was about an inch shy. But that's big that we didn't score. That guy couldn't get out his flag. It's big that we didn't score because now all of a sudden from the one yard line, this is a play I don't understand. I don't understand. I get it. You know, you're stretching it. It wasn't working that bad up to this point. But when you have Adrian Peterson in the backfield, all right, and you have Cabinda, and it's a third and goal from the one, you don't stretch the ball. It's just, it's too slow. If you're going to stretch it at least, at least do it with Swift. Obviously, hindsight could say, well, I should have played action. I get it. I'm not mad they ran the ball. It's just, it's a too slow of a play. I mean, this is a very slow play for the line setup. Watch here. So they set the motion. You know, they, they try to make him think they're maybe going that way. But look how slow this is. I mean, you're, you're handing the ball off at the six-yard line. This guy, you're making a one-yard run play six yards. Think about that. I mean, you're, you're basically making a one-yard play six yards for Adrian Peterson, and it's blown up. Our offensive line was absolutely dominated. Frank Ragnall just gets completely ran over. I mean, it just was a bad start for him, and then you can see Big V gets ran to his knees. I mean, it was like, wow, it just got exploded, and the Vikings knew kind of what was coming with Peterson back there, so it could have been a perfect time for a play action, but if you're going to run it, at least make it quick. That was just way too slow. I would like to see maybe a fullback handoff to mix things up a little bit. Back on the defensive side, this is a... Um, you know, Lions did struggle to stop the run a lot today. This time, you see Collins get into the hole. When Collins was able to get into the hole, it made it so other guys can make tackles, like Christian Jones, and he could blow them up. When they were either too slow and they wouldn't get into the hole and they would allow themselves to get picked up by blocks, that's when plays got to the second level. The Vikings did a very good job of selling a lot of their play action, so we would bite on those, and all of a sudden we'd get those routes over the middle like we saw in the first drive. Okay, but the defense, you know, they showed some glimpses of improvement for sure. I mean, this is one of those plays where you have good coverage across the field, okay? You have Justin Coleman on the outside. He has good coverage against Dylan running the post. I believe that's what he's running here. I actually, he just went deep. But you have good coverage across the field, right? So you have the crossing route, the Lions, you know, they do what they can to try to slow that down. As you can see, they have Colin sit here. So everything looks good downfield. But this is just a matchup that I think, you know, we saw it here and then we saw it later. It was kind of like a, a preview to what was going to happen before half. So everything is good down the field. Cousins steps up and he dumps it off. Now, yes, Collins, you have to make this tackle. But if he doesn't, it's man-to-man -man defense. I mean, there is, what, 30 yards before there's... This, this is how much room there is. I mean, there's no one out that wrote a triangle. That's how much room there is. There's that much room if he makes this man miss. And that's what happens here. I would have liked to see possibly putting a safety on him. But the problem is if you try to put a safety on him, all of a sudden, now when they run the football, you could be somewhat at a disadvantage. And that's kind of the problem with facing the Vikings. You got to have to pick your battle there. And if you don't win these one-on-ones, you're in trouble. Now, the Lions also didn't have Tracy Walker. So the Lions couldn't put Kirsten in the box because Kirsten and Will were their, you know, their th two of their three with Duran. They didn't have Walker. Maybe if Walker there maybe you get some better matchups against cook but as you can see just he broke his ankles and he picks up like 15 to 20 yards but the lions do end up finishing off this drive and they get a stop he did make a few key plays for us and i think you know there's reasons for optimism with his energy he brings a lot of energy to the game here you're going to see a handoff to the outside 
This is just Romeo Quora. Romeo Quora and Penasini are the two bright spots on this defensive line. There's no question. Uh, that time you can see, I think the Penasini got ran to the ground. But this is a good play. I mean, okay, you got a third and two here. You're going to see off the edge, they're going to bring Griffin. Now, Griffin, boom, stops. Waits to see if they have it. He doesn't have it. Now he comes to the quarterback. I didn't notice this before. I'm pretty sure he actually tipped the football because you can see it comes out wobbling. If he doesn't tip, this is the first down. So he gets up there. He tips the ball. You see it starts to wobble. It's underneath and it's incomplete. That's Everson Griffin. That's two plays from Everson Griffin. Didn't have a huge impact, but those are little things that you miss. And obviously that gets you off the field. I mean, that's just as good as a sack that gets you off the field. Have, you know, the play action. You hit Cephas. Cephas is a, it has, is a bright spot because he's pretty reliable. That's one of the biggest shots that you took all game. That might be your biggest completion of the game. I mean, it really might be. Again, I would have liked to see more shots taken in this game, knowing how, how depleted their secondary was. But then you see Karen get involved. This is great to see. They run the stretch here. The reason the stretch is better here is because they're not the one, right? They're not all selling out to stop the run. When you're in these situations, okay, they can't all sell out. So it worked better. But at the one yard line, it didn't work. But again, they just go with the quick, easy route. They just dump it off the Amendola. They just take what the defense giving them. And they do it again. And ultimately, on this drive, it leads to a touchdown. So now it's 13 to 3 on this drive. This play was nice. This was good. This was nice. So you can see they're showing blitz. Everybody at home knew that, hey, they're going to blitz here. They send out Hawkinson and then they just quit him on a quick little slant. All right. There's very quick slant. Just making sure he gets enough yards. And uh, it's great. I like it. So, you know, he's on the outside. He gets back to the inside and you got some room there. Tough throw. Good catch. Heck of a catch behind him. And the Lions move and they end up scoring. So now it's a three point game. But now before half, you have to find a way to get off the field and go in a half down three. You have to take that momentum, and the Lions can't do it. And again, it was set up by the same thing that we just saw in the drive earlier, Collins on Cook. It's not bad coverage on the field, right? You have good slot coverage, definitely good outside coverage. Okuda looking good here. You have Curse on the tight end. It's good coverage. But again, what kills him? Kirk steps up in the pocket, dumps it off. And as soon as he's beat, there is no one out here because you're in man-to-man -man defense. And he's got a long way to go. And look how far he goes with this one. I think, one, you may see the impact of not having Tracy Walker because you think about it. If Tracy Walker's out there, then you could potentially say, okay, hey, Tracy, you cover the tight ends. We'll put J-Ron in the box. You can follow the running back. That could be a matchup. But since he's not there, now you're basically asking Will Harris to cover a tight end. That's not really what you want to do. We've seen Walker do it. I don't think you want to do that to Will Harris. It just doesn't seem to be that successful. Also, you could drop in a zone, right? You could drop into zone. Zone was a little questionable for us. You could see that. I just think our cornerbacks, you know, especially Okuda, maybe isn't ready for the zone coverage yet. But, you know, maybe that gets better. Maybe that gets better now that Trufant is back. Maybe you go back to money. Whatever, maybe maybe you can drop in a zone more. Uh, that's something that could definitely help against that. Or Collins just has to make the play, maybe get faster. But you really don't have any linebackers, I don't think that can keep up with that. They are going to really put on the field. Maybe Jared Davis. You know, Jared Davis is now off the COVID list, so maybe Jared Davis gets that matchup next time. And I think specifically for the second one, because the first one with Delvin Cook, you know, you always have to respect the run. So you don't want to put a safety in the box because you have to respect it. But on the second one, before halftime, less than a minute, that's where I think you have to have better personnel on the field, knowing that, okay, they're probably not going to run the ball. And if they do, we have to hope that that safety or whoever we put in there can make that tackle. But I don't think it's necessary really to have Jamie Collins matching up on Delvin Cook when there's less than a minute, knowing that they're going to be passing the ball for the majority of the possession. You got to find somebody else to put in there. And again, that may come back to not having Tracy Walker, but I feel like there's got to be some other option there. Because, you know, that was clearly a problem. It sets up the touchdown. They hit him with the screen, uh, which we're going to see here. The screen, another good design. They designed plays really well here, and they took advantage of mismatches. That's another thing that I don't think we do enough. We keep the same game plan as we don't take advantage of mismatches. Their mismatch was Cook on Collins, okay? We're missing a safety, Cook on Collins. They took advantage of it, and it equaled two huge plays. For the Lions, they don't seem to do that. They don't seem to target a certain defender that's missing or things like that. It seems to be the same. So what you see here... This, I like it, right? So Lions always worried about the crossing routes. They send the crossing route, which Collins, you know, he has to be prepared for. But again, you're playing man-to-man -man defense everywhere. So you're not going to have anything back if you get this off. And that's what they do, right? They get the pass off and there's nothing back. And all of a sudden you get a touchdown. They game plan to, they game plan to score on the Lions. Offensively, I don't think we do that enough. I don't think we game plan enough to score and take advantage of what the weaknesses are. Here we go. Before half, another missed opportunity. Stafford steps up. He dumps it off. Swift's got some room if he catch it, and he doesn't. He's worried about running after he, before he catches it, and he drops it. So now we're in a half down by 10 instead of three. Just like the Packers game, right? Just like the Packers game, that quick little flip here. Uh, then you're going to see a handoff. This one goes for a good gain. This is Collins. You know, he slides over takes the hit. That's where you want to see him make a tackle right here. Boom. He can't do it. You also can see that we didn't get off of a lot of blocks. I mean, our defensive lineman really struggled to get off of blocks. They did a very good job blocking. You can see Curse. He can't get off his block. There was not much. I mean, he was getting pretty much untouched for the most part where look at Curse. I mean, that's kind of holding. Let's be real here, but we didn't shed many blocks. Here's another play to the inside. This is one where you're going to see Jamie Collins potentially, you know, he's going to be really aggressive. He's going to try to get in there, make the play. He can't do it, but then you need your backside to be there.
and he is there. So Collins, when he was able to get to the backfield and blow up the plays, it was big, and that's what he was trying to do, but it really did hurt us at times on play action when he would bite for that fake. So it tells me, I, sometimes I look at Okuda and say, man, he's better in the slot, but I think Okuda's man coverage has gotten much better. You can see this how physical he is. Now, again, there's no flag here. We saw this last week. He's physical, he's physical, he sticks with him, and then Trufant. Man, Trufant looks healthy. Tru Trufant didn't look good when he's played so far this year. Now he looks healthy and he looks like, okay, a $20 million player. That's what he looks like, what we signed him to. Jumps on it, knocks it away, brings up a punt. That's the kind of plays that we needed out of Trufant for how much he played, we paid him. We couldn't just have him be a leadership. We needed a guy that could help us this year. And that's what you see there in Trufant. Finally, he lo looked good today. He looked good in this game. You can see Swift makes a good cut up once again. Boom, hits the cut. And all of a sudden, you got six, seven yards. All you got to do is get behind them guards against this team, and you're fine. I mean, that's really the plan here. But again, okay, second down. This has to be a first down. He didn't run far enough last time. Now you have the dump off to Amendola, and he doesn't run far, and he doesn't catch it. it like, that's got to be a first down. You got to catch that ball. You got to move the chains. Then they go to an out route, and now that you're in the third down, again, they, they, they keep it so simple. It, it's it's the same thing. They go right to an out. And you can tell Stafford is just, okay, go right to the out. He may have had James over here if he sticks with it, but he goes right to the out, and that time it's not there. It's too obvious. It's too predictable what the heck we're going to do, Okay. We knew we were going back to the out route, but you dropped the first one. There's just little things that we just need to capitalize. You got to capitalize on some of these plays because we're not that great across the board to be missing all these plays and still pull out a win. You got to capitalize on these plays. And then here you're going to see Imani's tough drive. So they hit him with a double move, bang. They hit him with a double move, he jumps. And uh, this is when Okuda went out. So Okuda went out and you could honestly tell. They knew something that I didn't because they went with Okuda and he played better than Amani did today. Okuda be on the double route. You can see great job by Harmon getting over here, you know, getting in the play. They almost had a pick, but Amani was really got beat. I mean, Amani really struggled. This play, I don't make any, I don't understand what he's doing. So it's the third and five. Look how tight he's playing. I don't know if he was expecting like a cross route or what, but they hit him with basically a wheel route. And I don't understand why he's playing that tight of coverage on third and five. I don't get it. You have one, you have a single high safety. Why are you playing that tight on third and five? And you're all, not even blitzing. You're playing that tight. And all of a sudden they get by him. It's a really good throw. And it's a first down. Amani just struggled. He struggled when he came in. It was, they knew something. They knew some kind of matchup and they liked Okuda better. And it worked aside from zone. But you can see, I think the Lions man defense is starting to come around with Desmond Trufant. Trufant continues to play at a higher level. The man defense, I think, is going to be the move again because Okuda is way better in man than he is in zone. Here you're going to see just another big play. This is one where, okay, watch Jamie Collins. So we talked about it earlier. And he shoots through this gap before the play. He shoots here. And since he does that and he's not able to get there because it's actually a really good job by the center, I think. He comes off and blocks. But it opens up the cutback lane because there's no one in his hole. So he's not able to get back there. It's a perfect run play, and there's no one in his lane. He runs right to where Collins would have been, and all of a sudden they pick up 17 yards. So you kind of have to give and take, right? How aggressive do you want him to be? Because if you want him to be aggressive, stuff like that can't happen. And the reason we had to play aggressive because our defensive linemen, they weren't winning enough one-on-ones consistently. I mean, we were just never really winning it. Here you're going to see a pass where it's a pass interference. I don't completely agree with that call. I mean, they're kind of just fighting each other the whole way. But again, they put him on one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think that's a pass interference. But they get pass interference. It's another big play that changes the game puts him at the one and now all of a sudden they score a touchdown so now you're down by 17 you're down by 17 you're end of the third quarter the lines do the same thing dink and dunk dink and dunk dink and dunk and then we move the ball down the field and all of a sudden we get the pick so you're already down by 17 which means the game's almost over anyway anyways i don't know what stafford was looking at here to be honest with you i mean he started right to look at jones then he looked at amandola i'm thinking that he was probably thinking this linebacker would stay and you could see that you know he's getting separation he knows hawkinson's going to be here so i can see right now what he sees i see that and as he stay, starts there, now it's one of those plays where, okay, you're really going to have to throw this ball hard or you're going to have to throw it really high. This is a really tight window. He needs to almost throw it behind him, and he doesn't. That time he tries to lead him. I don't even know if he saw the linebacker. I really don't. Like, he just – he didn't see him. It's kind of weird, but – he, ser he just didn't see the linebacker almost. I mean, maybe he thought he was going to stay and follow. I don't know. He just didn't see him on the field, but he threw directly at him. But that's one pick, right? We're still down 17. So now we need to bounce back. We need defense to get a stop. Okay. And the defense does that, right? The defense started to improve as the game went on. The problem with the defense is they are up and down too much. They show like one good quarter and then the other quarter, they're really bad. They need this every quarter. And Harmon talked about it. He needs to be the leader on this defense. We heard him today. Harmon said that, hey, look. You have to do this more than just one game. You got to put this together for an entire season. And he's right. And he said he's going to be the leader. We need a leader on defense. We really do. We need a leader on defense to step up. And you can see there, Amani does a good job of stepping up. Then we have great coverage once again at Trufant, and they force a punt. Three and out, boom, just like that. We need that leader on defense, though, to hope to make sure that this is consistent. Man, what a difference does it make to get Austin Bryant back? Who would have thought that just because he's active, he'd be doing stuff like this? That's a game changer. You block a punt, that's an absolute game changer for the Lions. You block two punts in this game. You block two punts, huge play by Bryant, and it puts us back in position to score. Again, another pick to Hawkinson. And I just don't like it. I just feel like 
it, they're just completely relying on us to win one-on-ones and that's kind of the problem here but again this was one where i can i can understand this pick a lot more than the first one the first one, i don't know what he saw this one i understand okay so when stafford throws it which is right here he's lining up to throw it Maybe ask Karam, but as you can see, his back's turned to him. If you watch Stafford's interview, he said he could see how he could sneak it by his ear. This is one of those plays where he said he has to throw it higher. Honestly, if you throw it high, yeah, you could try to seal it out of the bounds. He's right, but he tried to really just gun it right past him. But Eric Kendricks, okay, who was the guy we said was the player to watch defensively? It was Eric Kendricks because this is what he can do. He can cover tight ends. We talked about it all week. He does a heck of a job. And what Eric Kendrick does here, as you can see, when he throws it, yes, it would work. But as soon as Hawkinson gets them big eyes and he's ready to catch the football, all of a sudden, Kendricks turns around and it's right in his hands. He is, you could see what he was looking at. Kendricks just makes that good play. Then the defense, they need to step back up. Trufant gets a sack there. Trufant played his best game by far. I mean, he's only played in a few, but he by far played his best game. Offense gets the ball back. We're moving it. And this is where Stafford goes down with an injury. But again, what are these route concepts? Like, for real, this is, you know, I don't understand what are route concepts here. We just run a drag here. And you can see there's nothing. I mean, we don't create any space. There's no separate separation created. This is my biggest problem with Bevel's offense. Yeah, I know he has a run for his guy, but you got to find a way to scheme some people open. I mean, you're simply just dragging everybody across. You're not, you're not opening a bus. You're not rubbing off anything like other teams do to us. There's nothing here. Everybody is covered. I mean, we're just expecting that we're going to win one-on-ones and we know they could cover well, but there's no separation anywhere. And, uh, you know, Stafford, he's trying to get to the first down line because it's way out here. I don't understand what we're doing with this play. Stafford's trying to make something happen down 17. He takes the sack, and that's when he goes out. And then defensively, this was this was it. Somebody has to realize this. Okay, you can just realize from watching back, there's definitely a problem here. Don't you guys notice there's not a guy right here? Like, that should be a tell that, oh, hold up. There's not enough players on the field. There's only 10 guys here. Collins realizes it. You'll see right here. He's like, hold up. Where's the guy at? Collins needs to call a timeout. Somebody has to call a timeout. Harmon's in the back end says he needs to be wary of that. But I don't understand it. True font. You're looking right at it. Kyle Harmon's looking right at it. There's, there's clearly three guys on the line. Patricia, somebody's got to call a timeout here. Someone has to realize this and say, hold up. There's only three guys on our line. This doesn't. This clearly doesn't look right. And the Lions still had a chance to bring him down, but it raced for 70 yards. Penasini, you know, he does a good job. Penasini wasn't able to bring him down, and it ends up in a 70-yard touchdown run. And that basically put the game away. I mean, that put it away because we got a field goal. We're down 14. Let's play. This is one of the bright spots that the Lions currently have. It's John Penasini. Watch what he does on here. He basically blows up this run by simply pushing the lineman into play. He's double teamed. And watch him. With one arm, he turns around the entire offensive lineman, and the running back runs into his own. I mean, that's... That's incredible. That's impressive. That's what Penasini brings. That goes to Pen that tackle is Penasini. I didn't even notice that the first time I watched it. Then watch Raglan's discipline here. You can see there's more discipline. He doesn't try to attack right away. He stays with it, stays with it, follows, follows, follows. Amani does a great job. He cuts up, and then Raglan's there to make tackle. Boom. You can see more discipline. This is the thing. The third quarter defense is much better, but the problem is we are too up and down defensively where some quarters were good, some quarters were not. We can't have that uh, right now. And then offensively, we have kind of the same deal where we're moving the ball consistently. We're just not finishing off drives. I mean, our red zone offense is awful. We have too many turnovers. We're just not finishing off drives right now. We're not capping off drives. We're not taking advantage of opportunities like this. So some bright spots. Austin Bryant's definitely a bright spot. Desmond Trufant looks good and healthy. He's going to, you know, allow lines to play more man like they like to. He looks he looks much better than I saw a year, so I'm assuming he's healthy. That's awesome to see. John Penasini is clearly a, a thing that you can build on. The bad, too many missed tackles, too much inconsistency defensively. The defensive line lost too many one-on-one -on -one battles. Obviously, Trey Flowers is a huge loss, and I think we saw that on the field. Getting him back will be big. And, uh, you know, the Stafford interceptions, those are, you know, something that you just can't have when you're trying to come back. But again, you were down by 17 before you even threw a pick. So there's there's a lot of plays that the Lions need to make. Um, that way they can stay in these football games. But the game's closer than it seems. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of things to build on top of here. And the Lions can improve upon to be better. They're just a few plays away from flipping a lot of these football games around. Are you kidding me right now? I had to put my helmet on for this one. Are you kidding? Look at this. Look at all these members. What? What? Yo. Hey. Shout out to all the members, man. Look, look how many All-Pro members there are. Like, literally, it's the whole screen, dog. This is crazy. The patrons, of course, the Hall of Fame members, man. Y'all got the gold color. It's kind of yellow, but it's supposed to be gold. Shout out to all the members, man. If you want to be a part of this, all you got to do is join the channel. But there are perks that come with it. Stay locked in the community tab if you are a member because that's where a lot of information comes out. I appreciate all of you. What?